Okay guys, today we're going to be mixing it up a little bit. Getting ready to go into the fall is also conveniently a great time, as always, to talk about guns. And the gun we will be talking about today is actually my AR-15, as some of you guys are already aware of it. But, as you can probably see if you're already aware of my AR, it looks a little bit different than it normally does. And that is because I've thrown another upper on it, and that is going to be the topic of today. We are going to be looking at the Radical Firearms uh, RF-15 upper. And this one is chambered in 5.56. I'm going to be going over what I did to it to make it mine, and my overall impressions of Radical Firearms, at least in the upper. <clears throat> so, let's jump into that. Okay guys, so like I said, this is a Radical Firearms RF-15 upper, and why I got this upper among the plethora of many other uppers out there. Really, there's a ton of AR-15 parts and by different people, but what drew me to Radical Firearms is, honestly, I've been thinking about Radical for a long time, or trying out their uh, products for a long time, because they seem to be one of the few companies out there that's putting together a really high quality piece of, you know, or different qual really high quality, different parts for the AR-15, from uppers to lowers to full complete rifles in a spectrum of calibers, not just your standard 5.56. And what really attracts me to them is the fact that they are all really affordably priced. I mean, an upper like this, I got the upper plus bolt carrier group and charging handle, all for $2.99, which sounds kind of steep because it is an AR-15 after all, but really if you look at the spectrum of uppers, that's not that bad, especially when you consider that this is coming with a Magpul M-Lock rail, a 15-inch M-Lock rail, and you know it's using a chrome molly steel barrel underneath here, that's a SOCOM profile, and the SOCOM profile is, as we may get into later here, is a really nice profile barrel. This is not some chintzy cheap, you know, profile. It's a nice thicker profile barrel. Like I said, you're also getting, you know, a bolt carrier group and a charging handle. So if you're looking to kind of, you know, just throw something together, you know, get a complete lower, get a complete upper, you, know, you can get this complete upper for under $300 or right at $300. Before we get into what I did, let's talk about the build quality at least from my experience. Now I've ran about 200 rounds through this RF or this RF15 556 upper so far and my experience has been pretty great. Now granted, I will say and I'll open this up for you guys. As you guys can see, I am running my own bolt carrier group in here as well as my my Radian Raptor charging handle from my original build. So far it's been absolutely flawless. I've had no failure to feed, failure to fire, none of that, and as far as the accuracy goes, this is a 16 inch, like I said, SOCOM profile barrel, so it's every bit as accurate as I am out to 100 yards. I've been shooting it at usually about 50 to 75 yards, then pushing it back to 100 and 150, and once again, I'm not going to claim to be some long range aficionado. I also don't have the type of ranges such as Nothing Fancy has, you know, to go out and shoot five, six hundred yards, but I am very confident that this gun will do that due to my experiences at 150 and in, and this gun easily goes out, hits the targets that I want, where I want, without any problem, and like I said, I think the bigger problem is probably me more than the rifle. The accuracy seems to be spot on, and while unfortunately I can't give you any, you know, MOA accuracy groups, I will say that it is very accurate, especially when I actually sit down and uh, really try to crank out the tight groups. The barrel and the upper have had no issues, like I said, you know, some people may say, you know, this isn't a full RF firearm, so, you know, how can I really judge it by its quality? However, what I would say is that the chamber is one of the big issues that you're going to have on an AR, and your gas system is going to be the other largest issue if you have a problematic AR. That's generally where your, sur or where your issues are going to surface the most. And so, an upper has both the chamber and the gas block in it, and so from what I can tell, from what I've been shooting, and like I said, I don't just do little range sessions with this gun. Usually when I'm out there, it's usually running 100 rounds through the gun at minimum, and making sure this gun works, that it's accurate, and that I can hit what I need to hit with the round, or with the firearm. So I have to say, 
the quality has been very impressive. I was a little bit optimistic or maybe pessimistic about RF firearms because, you know, this company is a very new startup down in Texas and there really hasn't been a lot of publicity, you know, really talking about RF firearms. It's just that I've seen them, you know, the, the stuff looks on the outside quality and I'm glad that, I'm really glad and stoked to actually see this company, you know, use their product, use their upper and, you know, see that, you know, this is actually a quality product put on by them. So not only does it look good, it also functions really well. I'm going to put this back up because it is raining, but okay. So now that it's raining and it's picked up a little bit more, let's look at what I did to this. Now for me, I've never been one of those people that likes to build out or mall ninja their ARs. You can tell if you guys are familiar with my original build, um, I'll probably link my original build in the description somewhere, but they're usually pretty basic builds because I'm not really needy and I just like a handful of things to work really well. So first and foremost, I have, um, I do have uh, Magpul backup iron sights. These are just the polymer ones. They're not my favorite, but they work and they're cheap. And that's kind of what I have to go for. Then next, you guys can see so next you guys can see I have a angled foregrip on this one. I did change it up. My original build has a small vertical grip, but I like the angle, angled foregrip. It's a little bit better and easier when I'm indexing the firearm, as you guys can see through the footage. And then the last couple mods are that I threw a Vortex crossfire on here. These aren't my favorite red dots, but they are good and they're inexpensive or reasonably inexpensive and they work well. Plus they have Vortex's awesome warranty. So then lastly, on the other side of things, I just have a sling mount for the sling, obviously that I run with the rifle. So that is all I've done to this rifle. Really not a whole lot. Uh, like I said, I'm not one of those people that really sits there and you know builds out a rifle with a ton of components. I like something that's really basic, really easy to use, and that just fits what I need. So that is how I set it up, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed learning about this. I really wanted to bring this video to you guys to just add as another talking point, because like I said, there isn't really a whole lot known about RF firearms, but I can say from my own personal experiences with this upper, um, I would definitely get a complete rifle from them, because like I said, though people are like, oh, this is just an upper, you know, for an AR, this isn't a complete rifle from RF, however your two biggest and most critical parts of the AR being reliable and functional, like I said, are your gas block and your chamber, and having a good chamber and a good gas block will make or break your AR. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, and as always, God bless, and I'm